Jupiter's varied collection of satellites are two of particular interest. Europa, which hides a large ocean of water beneath its icy surface, and Io, with its many volcanoes and continuous lava outflows. Saturn is perhaps the most impressive planet in the entire solar system, thanks to its majestic ring system. Saturn's rings are made up of pieces of rock and ice, mainly from former satellites that were torn apart by the planet's gravity. One of Saturn's moons, Titan, is an interesting world. Scientists have detected an atmosphere rich in organic matter and a surface with lakes of liquid methane. The next planet from our Sun is Uranus, which also has a large but less dramatic ring system. The outermost planet in the solar system, Neptune, looks quite like Uranus, yet has a much more active atmosphere. Beyond Neptune is a region containing dwarf planets such as Pluto, Eris, Makeme and Haumea. These dwarf planets, as well as probably hundreds more as yet undiscovered, and thousands of smaller objects, are located in a large zone at the edge of the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Further in, between Mars and Jupiter, the asteroid belt contains thousands of asteroids of various shapes and sizes. Space probes have managed to approach some of them and study them in detail. One probe even landed on the asteroid Eros and analyzed its surface. Finally, there are a huge number of celestial objects composed of ice and dust that we sometimes see from Earth as comets. In the past, their presence in the sky was thought to herald destruction and political upheaval. The Sun and its planets belong to a giant complex of at least 200 billion stars that make up our galaxy the Milky Way. Recently, we have detected planets in orbit around other stars in our galaxy, and the study of these new and sometimes exotic worlds is a burgeoning field of observational astronomy. Stars come in many different types and sizes, but none of them live forever. Their lifetimes range from a few million to billions of years. But when their fuel is exhausted, they die. Most of the time they do so in a violent manner, leaving behind exotic stellar remnants such as white dwarfs, neutron stars and black holes. Stars usually form in groups called stellar clusters, which fall into two categories, globular or open clusters. Globular clusters have a high concentration of stars, tightly bound into a ball by gravity. And their age can be deduced from the distribution of the types of stars within each cluster.
giving astronomers a key to their history. They are very common objects within galaxies. Some giant elliptical galaxies can host up to 30,000 globular clusters. Open clusters contain a smaller number of stars, all of much the same age. Stars in open clusters are loosely bound by gravity. Such clusters lose some or even all of their stars to the effects of gravity from other star clusters or gas clouds as they orbit the Milky Way center. In general, open clusters survive for a few hundred million years. Between the stars, there are huge clouds of interstellar dust and gas. The gas in these nebulae consists of hydrogen, helium and other ionized gases. There are reflection nebulae, emission nebulae and dark nebulae. If conditions are right, these clouds can also collapse under their own gravity until nuclear fusion ignites and new stars are born. The great act of creation continues to this day. Planetary nebulae are a type of emission nebula that are created when stars similar to the Sun expand, eject their outer layers and eventually become white dwarfs. Nova remnants are a special type of nebula, which enrich interstellar space with the heavy chemical elements indispensable to the creation of life. These remnants are the last surviving traces of the spectacular final demise of high-mass stars. Our galaxy is a spiral galaxy. 150,000 by 30,000 light years in size. At its center, a colossal black hole with a mass of about 4 million suns is lurking. Enormous as it is, the Milky Way is far from the only galaxy in the universe. There are hundreds of billions of galaxies, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Elliptical galaxies are typically made up of older stars. are usually composed of a bright nucleus and two spiral arms extending outwards from the galaxy's center. A quarter of all observed galaxies are spirals. with no specific shape are called irregulars. 
their dust and gas content is huge. Most irregular galaxies begin as spirals or ellipticals, but were deformed by the gravitational pull of other galaxies. Under the influence of gravity, galaxies have a tendency to form groups, clusters and superclusters. Within groups and clusters of galaxies, interactions and collisions are regular occurrences, which can distort the shape of the interacting galaxies and even change the course of their evolution. The universe of galaxies is one that is in constant motion, a sweeping cosmic dance, which, although beautiful, reveals the violence at its heart. It appears that the universe was created in a tremendous expansion, the Big Bang, almost 14 billion years ago. Since then, the universe has been expanding, and today its expansion not only continues, but is accelerating. But despite all that we have learned, many of the greatest questions about the creation and the eventual demise of the universe remain unanswered. We live in a vast and violent universe that exceeds human measures and imagination, but is governed by firm physical laws that allow the extraordinary complexity we call life to arise. From our vantage point, on a pale blue planet orbiting an undistinguished star, far from the center of our galaxy. We are privileged to be able to look out and seek the answers to these grand questions of existence. <laughs>